In recent years, Huawei was seen as a fallen giant, crippled by U.S. sanctions, cut off from key technologies, and pushed to the margins of the global smartphone race. Many in the West believed Huawei's best days were behind it. But now, in 2025, a new chapter is unfolding. Huawei is making an unexpected and powerful comeback. In this video, we'll dive deep into how Huawei managed the impossible, building an advanced chip without access to the world's most critical semiconductor tools, and what it means for the future of global tech. Stay tuned, because the battle for technological dominance is just heating up. Just a few years ago, Huawei's situation looked grim. In 2019, the U.S. government blacklisted Huawei, cutting off its access to crucial American technologies like Google's Android services, advanced chip-making tools from companies like Applied Materials, and most importantly, access to leading-edge semiconductor manufacturing. Without these resources, most experts predicted Huawei would slowly fade away. At best, surviving in local markets. At worst, collapsing under global competition. But Huawei didn't accept defeat. Instead, they retreated, regrouped, and launched a long-term survival strategy. Technological self-reliance. At the heart of this strategy is the Kirin 9000S chip, developed with the help of China's leading semiconductor company, SMIC. What makes the Kirin 9000S so groundbreaking is that it was produced using a 7 nanometer process, an incredibly advanced technology, without direct access to American or European equipment. How did Huawei and SMIC manage this? The answer lies in creative engineering, repurposing older equipment, and relentless innovation. SMIC reportedly used DUV lithography machines, less advanced than the cutting-edge EUV machines, but optimized them beyond previously assumed limits. This technological leap stunned global analysts. It proved that despite sanctions, China could still push forward into high-end chip production. Though not yet at the same scale or efficiency as giants like TSMC or Samsung, for Huawei, the Kirin 9000S represents more than just a technical achievement. It's a symbol of resistance, a message to the world that Chinese tech giants won't simply disappear under political pressure. The release of smartphones powered by the Kirin 9000S, like the Huawei Mate 60 Pro, sparked a surge of national pride inside China, with local consumers rushing to support the brand. But this comeback isn't without challenges. Without access to the very latest semiconductor tools, Huawei's chips are still less efficient and more expensive to produce than their Western or Taiwanese counterparts. Mass production at the same level as Qualcomm or Apple's chip partners remains extremely difficult. Moreover, the U.S. government has already responded, tightening restrictions even further, aiming to block not just the export of advanced tools, but even the flow of critical intellectual property and services. In short, Huawei's comeback is real but fragile. It's a demonstration of ingenuity under pressure, but it's also a sign of how fragmented the global tech industry could become if the tech war between the US and China continues to escalate. And this is just the beginning. In the next section, we'll explore Huawei's broader strategy, moving beyond smartphones to new frontiers like autonomous driving, 5G infrastructure, and artificial intelligence, reshaping their business for a post-sanctions world. After securing a symbolic victory with the Kirin 9000S chip, Huawei knew it couldn't rely on smartphones alone for its future. The global smartphone market is saturated, margins are shrinking, and most importantly, sanctions have permanently changed the game. That's why Huawei has shifted its focus to new high-growth industries, betting on areas where U.S. influence is weaker and where China's domestic market can support rapid expansion. One of the biggest pillars of Huawei's new strategy is autonomous vehicles and smart car technology. Through its division called Huawei Intelligent Automotive Solution, IAS, the company is aggressively positioning itself not as a car manufacturer, but as a technology partner to automakers. Huawei's goal is to supply critical components like AI-powered driver assistance systems, 5G connectivity for cars, battery management technologies, and integrated infotainment platforms. They've already partnered with several Chinese automakers, including Ceres, Chang'an, and Beck, to integrate Huawei's tech into next-generation electric vehicles. In this market, Huawei is applying the same playbook that made it successful in smartphones. Deep R&D investment, aggressive product iteration, and building ecosystems that lock in users and partners. The second major pillar is 5G infrastructure and enterprise solutions. 
Despite U.S. efforts to block Huawei from Western 5G networks, the company remains a dominant player across large parts of Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America. In these regions, Huawei is selling not just equipment, but full-service digital transformation packages for cities, industries, and governments. From smart city solutions to private 5G networks for factories, Huawei is embedding itself deeper into the digital infrastructure of emerging markets, areas often overlooked by Western competitors. And then there's the biggest frontier, artificial intelligence and cloud computing. Huawei is investing billions into building AI training centers, cloud platforms, and next-generation data centers, all powered by its own hardware and software stacks. Through its Ascend line of AI chips and Huawei cloud services, the company aims to create a vertically integrated ecosystem, controlling everything from hardware to application layers. If successful, this would not only reduce China's dependence on U.S. cloud giants like Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud, but could also open up massive new revenue streams across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. All these moves signal one clear thing. Huawei's vision is no longer just about surviving sanctions. It's about thriving without the West, building an independent tech empire that can grow even under geopolitical pressure. But these ambitions also come with serious risks. Fierce domestic competition from companies like Xiaomi and BYD, rising technological costs, and the ever-present threat of tighter global export restrictions. Still, for now, Huawei is proving that innovation, when driven by necessity, can create entirely new paths forward. In the next section, we'll look at how Huawei's bold strategy could reshape the global tech landscape and what it means for American tech giants like Apple, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm. Huawei's resurgence is more than just a corporate comeback story. It signals a deeper shift in the global balance of technological power, one that could have lasting effects on markets, governments, and consumers around the world. At the heart of this shift is a simple but powerful fact. If Huawei can thrive without American technology, other Chinese firms might follow. And that's a serious problem for U.S. tech dominance. Companies like Apple, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, and even giants like Google and Amazon have long relied on a world order where American technology remained indispensable, the global gold standard. But if Huawei, despite sanctions, despite massive obstacles, can build competitive chips, cloud services, AI solutions, and 5G infrastructure, it sets a dangerous precedent for U.S. interests. First, let's talk about smartphones. Huawei's return to the high-end smartphone market with domestically produced chips could hurt Apple directly. Especially in China, one of Apple's largest markets outside the U.S. already, reports show rising Chinese nationalism around technology. Consumers increasingly see buying Huawei devices not just as a personal choice, but as a patriotic act. If this trend continues, Apple's market share in China could shrink, cutting into its global profits and brand strength. Second, in the world of semiconductors, Huawei's move threatens companies like Qualcomm and NVIDIA. Qualcomm depends heavily on selling mobile chips into the Chinese market. If Chinese brands, empowered by Huawei's breakthroughs, move toward full self-sufficiency, Qualcomm's revenues could suffer major hits. Meanwhile, NVIDIA, although more focused on AI and GPUs, could face future challenges if China accelerates efforts to replace U.S. chips across cloud and AI sectors with domestic alternatives. Third, the broader tech war itself could intensify. If Huawei proves that U.S. sanctions can be defeated through domestic innovation, the U.S. might respond with even harsher measures, including stricter export controls, heavier sanctions on related companies, or new policies aimed at curbing Chinese tech influence globally. This escalating spiral could fragment the global tech ecosystem even further, forcing companies and countries to choose sides between U.S.-aligned and China-aligned technologies. For Europe, Africa, and Latin America, the choices will be complex. U.S. technology might offer prestige and reliability. Chinese technology might offer cost savings and political alignment. And consumers worldwide could end up living in a technologically divided world, with different standards, different ecosystems, and less interoperability between devices and networks. In the long run, this fragmentation could slow innovation globally, raise costs for businesses and consumers, and increase political tensions across regions. But for now, the most important takeaway is this.
Huawei's comeback is not just about one company regaining ground. It's about China demonstrating that even under massive external pressure, technological ambition, and the will to innovate can't be easily crushed. And that realization could reshape the entire future of the tech world as we know it. In the final section, we'll sum up what all this means and why staying informed about Huawei's next moves is crucial for investors, tech enthusiasts, and anyone interested in the future of global technology. Huawei's story is no longer just about smartphones, chips, or even sanctions. It's about resilience, adaptation, and the undeniable will to compete on the global stage, no matter the obstacles. The comeback we're witnessing today is more than a business recovery. It's a strategic shift, a blueprint for how nations and corporations can survive and even thrive in a fragmented, polarized world. Huawei's ability to innovate under extreme pressure sends a clear message to the tech world. Dependence on any single country's technology is a vulnerability. For investors, technology enthusiasts, and policymakers alike, understanding Huawei's next moves is critical. This isn't just about one company growing stronger. It's about entire global markets shifting under the weight of new technological power centers. As China continues to push forward, with Huawei at the front lines, we may see the emergence of two parallel tech ecosystems, one led by U.S. companies and another by Chinese giants. The question is, who will innovate faster? Who will win consumer trust? And how will global markets adapt to this new reality? We're standing at the early stages of a new technological cold war. And companies like Huawei are no longer just pawns in the game. They are players, bold, strategic, and increasingly independent. The next few years will be critical, not just for Huawei, not just for China, but for the future of global technology as a whole. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Can Huawei truly challenge US tech dominance, or will American sanctions eventually slow down their momentum? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I read every single one. Your insights help build a smarter, more engaged community here. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the global tech shifts shaping our world, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss the next big story.